They are trying to silence everyone, and um, that is what they want. Hello, thanks for joining us today on Encore. The female artists who fled Kabul as Afghanistan fell to the Taliban. Artist and curator Rada Akbar escaped to Paris, and one of Afghanistan's most prominent filmmakers, Sara Karimi, fled with her family to Ukraine. Olivia Salazar Winspear reports now on their journey to this point. Suspense, tension, and a foreboding sense of urgency. This frantic escape from Afghanistan may resemble a scene from an action movie, but for Sara Karimi, it was all too real. The filmmaker had pledged to stay in her home country, come what may, but when the Taliban took over, she decided to evacuate and headed to the airport in Kabul, where the situation was chaotic. The moment that we missed the first airplane, it was the, the most sad moment in my life because I thought that, okay, we cannot go anymore, we stay. And then I started again. You know why? Because I am a fighter. I never give up. I never, ever give up. With the help of Turkish and Ukrainian authorities, Sara and her family are now in Kiev. Heading up the Afghan film organization, the country's national cinema institution, Karimi has built up a celebrated career in film. Her feature, Hava Maria Maisha, had support from actress Angelina Jolie and was applauded at the Venice Film Festival in 2019. Now, the director fears for the future of the arts and most of all, for the fate of the women who remain in Afghanistan. Don't keep silent, please, please, please. And I beg you, please, tell to your husband not to give them recognition. If they give the Taliban political recognition, if they accept them, they will, they will destroy our lives, women's lives. Concerns echoed by photographer Rada Akbar, whose art has often explored feelings of loss, grief and oppression within Afghan society. Her exhibition, Abarzanan, was released online on International Women's Day. It zooms in on powerful female figures and the victims of targeted killings. Dear lost treasures, I feel deeply saddened to be here today. It feels devastating to give my words to you today. Writers, activists, human rights defenders, mothers, fathers, children. Akbar's practice was a defiant and triumphant act of opposition until very recently, when she too had to leave Afghanistan. Yet her self-portrait sent a poignant message that artists and women cannot be erased. I'm pleased to tell you that both women are safe. Artist and curator Rada Akbar is in quarantine in Paris. The filmmaker Sara Karimi is in Kiev. And we were due to speak to um, Sara, but she's blocked in immigration at the moment in the immigration office in Ukraine. We can cross to Rada, though. Rada, what do you think would have happened if you'd stayed in Afghanistan? Um, what would happen to me? Um, they would either... Uh, put me in prison or would kill me. What they had done to hundreds of people, uh, and as you know, as uh, you know, they targeted them and they killed them since last September. And amongst them were, you know, most of them were women, and um, every one of them were young, established people as activists, as artists, as writers, as journalists, as judges. Um, I think that is what they would have done to me and to everyone else who um, who managed to, you know, to leave the country, to flee the country. Just describe to us, what's it like for women under the Taliban rule as it was in the past for people who watching who might not remember that time? Um, the thing is uh, that people um, often forget that, you know, Taliban existed in the past two decades. It was not that, you know, they existed uh, before 2001 and after that they, they vanished. They have been there in Afghanistan and they 
uh, were violent, you know, um, um, they were uh, fighting, they were um, imposing their rules in the areas under their control, they were stoning women, they were killing women and men, and uh, that is all we know about the Taliban, you know, what is they have been practicing, exercising in the past two decades. And uh, I don't believe if they have changed overnight, they are, they are still the same uh, terrorist groups, and they are still fighting for the same ideology. They have claimed um, that they will respect women's rights within the framework of Islamic law. Why do you think your self-portraits that represent independence and heritage are such a threat to them? And, uh, well, I want to know what is their, you know, what uh, rights they talk about when they, when they uh, address Sharia law. Because based on what I understand from their Sharia law, and their uh, rules is that women have no right. Right now they ask women to stay at home because they say they need to train their soldiers how to treat women. And uh, they, you know, um, they ask women who, because there were few women who tried to go to their offices in the past week, and then they asked them to go back home. And they ask women to not leave home for the moment. But this is only in Kabul because right now it's a hot topic and all the attentions of the whole world is on Afghanistan and specifically on Kabul. That is why I think they are also very, you know, extremely cautious about um, not, you know, uh, doing more violence to the civilians, to the women. But I, I don't believe if they have changed or if they, uh, if they respect women or if they led women to, you know, to enjoy their rights. And uh, what I do is against what they call Sharia law, to empower women, to give women a voice, to recognize women, to honor women. And um, that is what, what the, they call uh, non-Islamic and what they think is uh, against their, their Sharia law. And Radha, you're one of the few who've made it out of the country. Thousands of people are still stranded at Kabul's airport, a site of danger and chaos. What do your friends say it's like in Kabul now? It's a chaotic situation and a lot of um, friends of me uh, got stuck there with their families. And all of these people, um, women and young women, they have been uh, they have been contributing to the society in the past two decades and uh, they are at, at high risk. And uh, now they cannot even make it to the airport and uh, they will they will get stuck there and uh, that is my main concern that what will happen to them um yeah the, these countries they managed to evacuate thousands of people but millions of people are left behind what will happen to them what the world will do to them after they are done with the evacuation because even the evacuation was not that successful a lot of people left you know uh, are left behind a lot of people that were not supposed to be on the flights got on the flights, families got separated, kids, you know, got separated from their parents, parents got separated from their kids. Um, I think it's, it has been a big mess so far. And Radha, online you've written about um, your anger at how America's departure from Kabul has been handled. Um, can you talk to us a bit more about that? Um, the way they used to treat and they have been treating uh, people is just beyond horrific. And because all these people are those who have been working, who have been, um, you know, contributing to all aspects of the society. And right now they are being treated so terribly, so inhuman. And that was so insulting and so disturbing to me to see how they are treating my people now instead of saving them. And Rada, you have an annual exhibition called Abba Zanan, which translates as superwomen. It's an installation honouring Afghan women who've shown strength and resilience in the face of misogyny. It was forced online this year. Why? Um, since last September, uh, we lost about 200 young established uh, women and men who have been contributing to the society in all aspects of society as journalists, as writers, as activists, as judges. And uh, they have been assassinated by the Taliban. And uh, um, yet they denied it, but uh, there have been official statements that they, 
they accuse the Taliban that they have been behind those targeted killings. And um, I was advised by the security officials to uh, hold my exhibition online because they say they will not be able to um, take the security of those whom I would want to invite to come to the opening of the exhibition. But also I wanted to show the world what we have been going through. And that is why I uh, launched the exhibition, the opening with the deceased who, you know, had been killed uh, recently. And um, I, I, I did the exhibition and um, we filmed it and then we released the videos online so people could see the exhibition. So, because I didn't want to miss the exhibition, I didn't want to cancel it. What do you think um, the international community needs to do now? They should not turn their back to Afghanistan and Afghan people uh, because thousands of millions of women and girls are left behind. They were not on the planes, they were not on the evacuation list, but uh, they deserve to have their rights. They deserve to have the right to go to school, to um, do what they want. And uh, without the international community's attention and pressure, uh, I'm worried that they will lose everything. We already lost a lot. Um, so I want them to put pressure on the Taliban to save and protect civil society in Afghanistan, to protect women's rights, girls' rights, um, to protect our cultural monuments. And um, yeah, that is what I'm expecting from the, from the international community. Okay, Radha Akbar, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best over the next weeks and months. Please keep in touch with us. We're gonna leave you now with images from Radha's exhibition, Super Women, Celebrating Women, in Afghanistan. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. event. Hello, I'm Annette Young, the host of The 51%. This Friday, France 24 and our parent company, France Media Monde, will focus their coverage on the plight of women in Afghanistan. We will have exclusive reports from Kabul, testimonies and analysis. To understand why the rights of Afghan women is indeed a crucial issue, watch France 24 and France24.com or do follow us on social media.